Brad TRT for Warriors coming at you with a, another video. This is Fit Father Project TRT Therapy in Men. Honestly, this is a new channel for me. I haven't heard of um, the Docs channel before, and um, I'm really interested in what he has to say. All right, my friend, welcome back. This is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi from the Fit Father Project, and this is a highly requested video here on our channel. It's breaking down testosterone therapy for men. We're gonna talk about what it is, if it may be right for you, what are some of the benefits and different forms it comes in, what are some of the real research-backed health risks, and at the end of this video, we're gonna give you some alternatives and our overall stance on TRT. I know you're gonna learn a ton in this video, so get out your pen and paper, take some notes, and let's dive on in. FitFatherProject.com. So over the past few years, testosterone replacement therapy um, has gained a lot of popularity, partly because of media and marketing, but partly because it can produce real results and life-changing results for guys who do have testosterone deficiency. So let's look at the big picture first. And that is that after age around 35, men's testosterone levels naturally decrease by about 1% every year. And that means that when you're in your 60s, you might have 25 to 35% less testosterone. And for some guys, this leads to a lot of problems. It leads to feelings of low. I'm gonna stop him right there. That is not true. Sure, in our current literature, that there is a 1% decline at an epidemiological population level of European and American males. But that is not global. That does not include workplace injuries, traumatic brain injury, hypogonadism from uh, endocrine uh, disrupting chemicals. It doesn't include sports injuries or other types of medical illness. It is not natural. Um, we did not live like this prior to the 1960s, and we have literally 40% less testosterone than our grandfathers. So that's completely not true at all. It's true in the context of epidemiological studies, that's what we have out there. But it is not true in a global context, and it's not true that it's actually healthy. That No, I'm not, I'm not going to let him get away with that, because that's... Yeah, it ha you have to understand where this comes from to understand where you're going. And if you understand that it's not natural to have a decrease in testosterone at a percentage level where every single year you're getting closer to hypogonadism, then you can understand the fact that you need to maintain optimization levels and that it's not natural for you to decrease energy, no sexual drive, even depression, inability to build muscle and lose fat. So these are things that are real symptoms of testosterone deficiency in men. But our bodies naturally decrease in testosterone. But what also happens is when we put on the whole layer of our modern stressors, meaning we're living in stressful environments, we're not sleeping enough, and there's also a lot of estrogens in our environment from plastics, from things that are in our water supply, men's testosterone levels are being bombarded. So there's a lot of guys that are turning to TRT as an option to feel better. And when some guys do take it, they feel substantially better. So what is testosterone replacement therapy? Well, quite frankly, it is administering external, which I'll use the word exogenous from here on out, testosterone in a variety of different forms that we're gonna discuss to replace the body's lacked production. So under normal circumstances, our brain communicates with our testicles to produce testosterone levels. And normal men's testosterone levels are anywhere from 280, which is on the, ver which is on the baseline of the low range, nanograms per deciliter, up to around 1,000. So when we're teenagers, or, or we're on the higher end of the range and we slowly decrease over time, and there are a lot of reasons why your testosterone could be in the low range. So what testosterone replacement therapy is, is for guys on the lower end of the range, which is a very debatable topic as we're gonna talk about where that lower end really falls in. Um, it's taking external testosterone through either injection, through pill, through cream, through an implantable pellet that actually gives your body testosterone. What happens is that testosterone binds to the androgen receptors on your cells and does all the things that normal testosterone would do. And as a result, your body stops producing its own testosterone for the most part. When we take it externally, it provides a feedback loop in the body and the body stops taking testosterone. And I need to also say this point here um, is that there's not too much of a difference between um, an anabolic steroid that a bodybuilder may use if they're using pure testosterone and the stuff you would get in testosterone 
testosterone therapy. In fact, a lot of bodybuilders use the exact same thing that you might get in injectable testosterone, testosterone scipionate. The bodybuilders use the same drug. It's the dose that changes the difference. So a normal testosterone replacement <laughs> therapy dose may be anywhere from so 75 funny. milligrams up to 150 <laughs> milligrams on the very high end per week if we're talking in an injectable form. A bodybuilder will take five to uh. 10 times that amount. So you need to know just to kind of clear that thing up. And there are other bodybuilding drugs that people use. When we're talking about testosterone replacement therapy, we're talking <laughs> What is this guy talking about? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. <laughs> wow, this is absolutely hilarious. Okay, number one, this guy's a doctor. Well, he's a naturopathic doctor, so that has his own host of problems. But this guy's a doctor, okay? And he should know that CYP450 enzyme drug clearance exists, and that adipose tissue exists, and that if you are obese, then you're going to have more adipose tissue, which means more CYP450 enzymes, which means that you're going to be clearing the drug easier. So, say in the case of somebody who is rail thin, they're 98 pounds. Okay, the 75 to 100 milligrams might be something that you would want to try. Well, in the case of somebody who's 200 to 500 pounds, now this is supposedly, in his opinion, where we're getting to bodybuilder dosages. Well, that's absolutely nonsense, because if you take someone who's 200-something to, let's say they're 1,000 pounds, and you want to drive them to lower, well... You're going to have to administer at least 200 to upwards even to a gram to get them down to where they would need. Now, obviously, the gram is where we're getting into super, supra physiological, extra bodybuilder sort of things, but that doesn't matter because in other studies they've done on cancer, they were using 600 milligrams. So, am I not good enough to be a cancer patient? Who says? Who is this naturopathic doctor deciding what dosage is good for me? Now, this is obviously where you need to talk to your doctor, but this is 100% misinformation, and you cannot apply one person's dose to the next person. It's not how it works. Drug response is individual. The same rules apply when you're, when you're um, in the back of an ambulance and they're putting ketamine inside of you. The same rules apply when you're getting surgery and using morphine. Drug clearance is independent and individual. No person can decide what dosage you're supposed to be on, except for you and your doctor, and definitely not uh, Dr. Baduzzi. About taking testosterone, the actual molecule that our body produces, it's just bound to different kinds of salts depending on the delivery mechanism. So is it right for me? Well. This is really a question for your doctor and getting some real lab work. We need to combine lab work. Where do you fall on the total testosterone picture? So we want to know where you're at um, on your total testosterone range, which you can do with a simple blood test. We'd also want to know what your free testosterone is, because a lot of guys don't realize your total testosterone levels don't give the whole picture. Um, there's something called sex hormone binding globulin, SHBG, that binds up your testosterone and keeps it from actually acting on these nuclear testosterone receptors. But we, so we have a free level, which is basically how much is bioactive and that can be low in guys well, at least it knows so that high <laughs> total fine total testosterone and low free and it still could be indicated for you but again this your doctor needs to really work with you on what's your blood work and what are your symptoms and does it fit the picture and it's kind of like the wild wild west right now on testosterone levels that people are prescribing on some people are giving some doctors are prescribing testosterone replacement therapy for guys in ranges around 500 others think that's absolutely crazy and you need to wait until you're around the 200 300 range so it's very very dependent on your relationship with your doctor, what they think is medically safe for you based on your history. So this is something that the take home point here, go to your doctor if you're interested in going down this route and get supervision for your particular circumstance. We can't just say, oh, you have testosterone levels of 400, it's good for you to do T. This is very, very interesting. And what he's getting at is the fact that, so you have what's called on-label treatment and off-label treatment. On-label treatment is you have a guideline, there's a specific dosage, there's a specific range, and the insurance company dictates 
what treatment a doctor gives you, which in my opinion should be a thousand percent illegal, but that's another conversation. Um, then there's the guidelines in terms of dosing testosterone. Well, he's kind of stating, which is a good thing, that there's a gray area that's there. What's the gray area? Well, the guidelines basically state that hypogonadism basically is roughly under 500 nanograms per deciliter area, anything between 500 and zero, and symptomatology. Well, what's symptomatology? Symptomatology is the expression of the amount of symptoms that you have. You feel like shit, you have depression, you don't have any boners, you don't want to bang your wife, uh, your cognition's shit, and you can't focus. Those are pretty much the symptoms of hypogonadism. Well, anybody lower than a certain amount is going to have fucking hypogonadism. It's just how it is. And um, I'm not sure if he's going to get into it yet, but he may get into the whole age factor. Well, age is irrelevant. You can get into a car accident at 15. You can be an athlete uh, when you're younger and... Um, damage your testicles or damage your brain your hypothalamus or your pituitary so you stop producing various hormones um on one of the other videos that i did a 27 year old who hadn't reached puberty um mr westfall has a genetic mutation which then prevented him from going through puberty and prevented him from having the hormones that he needed well, what ended up happening is way later into the process, he ended up, you know, getting on TV, he got seen by a doctor, oh, and magically, oh, you okay, have hypogonadism, give you some hormone replacement therapy, and now you're better. Where he could have had that treatment done earlier, and nobody stopped and asked him any questions, or no doctor caught it ahead of time, but all of this means is that there is no age that you should every single year be getting your blood tested. If you're a veteran, if you're an athlete, if you're a cop, if you're a firefighter, a construction worker, any sort of active person, you need to get your blood tested. And if you're a car accident survivor or a trauma survivor in general, you need to get your hormones checked. Doesn't matter if you're a dude, doesn't matter if you're another dude. Lady, guy, doesn't matter. Get your levels tested, find out what you are, know what your total, you're free, your sex hormone binding globulin, your albumin, find out what those levels are, add in some thyroid and some IGF-1 for your growth hormone, find out what those levels are, and go to a hormone replacement clinic. Don't ask your general practitioner or doctor. They're not trained on it. It's not worth your time. You can call up a hormone replacement clinic. You tell them your numbers, and over the phone, they'll be able to tell you if it's good enough or not. So just go through that process and... Um, get the right type of treatment for your illness. RT therapy, because there's other alternatives that we're going to talk about on ways you can potentially increase your testosterone naturally that does not require going on TRT, which again, shuts down your internal production. Is it a long-term thing? If you want to do TRT, it's something that you're sticking for. It's not like you do it for a little bit and you necessarily come off. Let's talk about the benefits. Well, when you have more testosterone and you've been deficient, you're gonna find that the number one thing guys start to experience is an overall greater sense of well-being and energy. A lot of guys who feel like they're just lethargic and exhausted all the time and feeling kind of depressed when they start TRT, they feel better, they feel youthful, they feel the vigor. Because testosterone acts on our brains too and what we know is that testosterone deficiency being low in testosterone is a risk factor for Alzheimer's and cognitive decline. So you don't want low testosterone levels. You don't necessarily want super high levels either. We can talk about that in a little bit. So guys start to feel better. You might find that your muscle mass increases a little bit. You might find that it's easier to recover from your workouts and you lose fat a little bit better. But do know this, just taking testosterone replacement therapy without changing your diet and your exercise is not gonna turn you into Arnold Schwarzenegger. You need to have the whole plan in place, but it can augment your results on those things the forms that testosterone replacement therapy comes in. Um, the most common form, I would say, would either be a gel. So you can rub gel on your skin. It can deliver the testosterone transdermally. Um, other guys use injections, which I would say is honestly a better option because you can be a little more standardized with your dose. And you know, I'm injecting X amount of testosterone per week, so we can track that with blood levels. Versus a gel, there might be some differences and how much is absorbed for any given day? Did you have something on your skin where you're sweaty? A little more variability. But there's other methods too for guys who don't want to have to get injected once a week, once a month, depending on your doctor's schedule and the testosterone they may choose for you, might do something like a pellet where they can actually um, implant a little pellet into your hip that dose time releases testosterone, and now there are even some oral forms that are available. But with a lot of these oral forms of testosterone and derivatives of testosterone,
what he just mentioned just kind of in passing was a thousand percent medical malpractice. If your doctor just read the packet for testosterone and it says, oh, well, stable blood levels of this medication stay in your blood for seven days to 12 days, that person should be immediately fired. That is not how testosterone works. In a lab, the concentrations will stay in there for a certain amount of time. When we're talking about testosterone dosing, the minimum amount of dose, uh, minimum amount of injections that you need to do is two injections per week. Diurnal pulsatile control of the medication is done through a rhythm, and that rhythm is based off of injecting a certain amount intramuscularly into your muscle. Then that medication is leached out into the rest of the body over a certain amount of time. We want stable blood concentrations. What happens if you don't have stable blood concentrations? Well, with pellets and with gels, you go super, super high and you bottom out super, super low. We want slow and steady wins the race. We want low and slow chili. We want lazy river. Basically, we want free testosterone levels from 30 to 70, somewhere in there, find your number. And for me, it's personally, it's 56. That's just my personal number. And I stay at a constant level with daily administration for me, but that's just me personally. And you would do 2x or 3x every other day or even daily injections. And you would stay at a particular level for an entire week. And then you don't have hormonal spikes and ups and downs. What happens with women when they have their period? Well, they have spikes up and down of their various rhythms of of hormones and that causes problems with acne and with other various issues or say with menopause it causes these various issues where we have an extreme change in terms of hormones men don't necessarily have this more of a gradual change or say if it's traumatic brain injury where it's completely cut off and you're just down to the dumps it's more of an extreme but when you have a ups and downs or say if you looked at a bodybuilder and they were doing a bodybuilding show and they go from standard TRT dose from 100 to 400 milligrams <laughs> it's a joke there but 100 milligrams 400 milligrams somewhere in there and then they went up to a gram right they're going to get acne they're going to get crazy side effects if they're not bald they might be bald by the time they end up because you're uh, pushing your DHT up pretty high and this all results in different sorts of problems this is not something that we pass over because when we're talking about TRT and getting started, what is the main thing you want to do? You want to use this as a tool. You want to be able to rest on this so you can solve your thyroid. You can solve your growth hormone. You can solve your vitamin D. You can solve the other issues that are going on inside of your body. This is the only medication that we can do this with because other medications have different ways that it clears. There's different problems with it. Um, whereas testosterone is a fairly stable and consistent medication that doesn't have any changes when you have a dialed in constant dose. Pellets don't produce that, gels don't do, don't do that, creams don't do that. The only thing that does that is intermuscular injections. Eventually we'll have something that's different, but for right now that's what's safe, that's what works, that's what allows you to have stable levels and you don't have the problems that you would have with other routes of administration where it's going to cause your hormones to go out of whack and you're going to feel like shit. You may as well do intramuscular injections, feel good, get to a dialed in dose, and what Dr. Morgenthaler just talked about in one of our last videos is you want to be normalized. And what does normalized mean? It means optimized. You want to be at an optimized dose for you, not for someone else, not for Arnold, not for your celebrity, for you personally not even for your doctor. <laughs> Testosterone, you have to worry about the effect on your liver because your liver typically has a first pass metabolism where to survive that first pass metabolism, they have to add certain methyl groups and stuff to the testosterone that can be a little hard on your liver. So that is concern as well. The cleanest route seems to be injection for most people who go down TRT, but the pain in the ass, pun intended, is you gotta inject yourself often, whether that's going to the doctor's office or you can even do it at home under certain circumstances. But again, you also have to work with the doctor and see what the laws are in your state. So let's talk about the medical risks. 
Because as good as testosterone sounds like, wouldn't we oh, all want no, more, we don't do that. more muscle building, more fat loss, we don't do that. better we sense do not of take confidence oral and energy? Testosterone. There are legitimate risks because we testosterone do does certain things to the body. The first main thing we see with most people who start TRT is they do have a thickening of their blood. And, and this don't is largely do your evidence on Go blood work do it as your hematocrit, which is it. the percentage of your blood that's filled with red blood cells. There, wait, no, 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 no. There is no law against you doing your own injections. That's absolute nonsense. It causes your blood to be thicker. It causes your body to produce more red blood cells. This increases oh, your risk. God. It's not causative, but it increases your risk for certain heart problems. You have thick blood pumping through those arteries, increases your risk for potential things like strokes and blood clots like that. So some people who are on TRT... <sighs> Wow, I swear, these people, this guy is not qualified to talk about this. Okay, what he's talking about is the difference between cancer in the blood, which is polycythema vera. What he's talking about is polycythemia erythrocytosis. Polycythemia erythrocytosis means there is more oxygen in the blood. It just means that your hematocrit is higher. Yes. Well, are the people in Colorado dropping dead like flies because they're a mile above the rest of the United States? Tell me, how many people do you know who died in Colorado last week? Okay, it's ridiculous. Okay. Dr. Rousier is the expert in this. And... The consensus is that erythrocytosis is increase in oxygen in the blood. And what do Olympic athletes do before they go to the Olympics? They go to Colorado, they do a bunch of training, and they have elevated oxygen inside of their blood, and they go to work out at sea level, and now they have higher level performance. Do they die from having higher level hematocrit? No. Why is the reason for that? Well, there is a mechanism inside of the body which when we have exogenous testosterone to be administered through um, intermuscular injections, we then increase red blood cell uh, and increase oxygen inside of the blood, which increases hematocrit, provides more oxygen, and there's a down regulation mechanism which there's no one that's on TRT who goes into a dangerous zone of hematocrit I think is, let's say it's roughly 100. I don't know what the number is, but pretty much every TRT patient is between 40 and 70, somewhere in there, and there's a downregulation mechanism that happens that prevents your hematocrit from going higher. All it means is that you have more oxygen in the blood. Now, the difference is, is that, so say this guy was right, okay? Well, he's not. He's an idiot, and he doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, how would we then do the diagnosis for someone who has polycythema vera, which means you have cancer in the blood? Well, you do gene testing, and it's called JAK2, and there's another JAK as well um, gene that we look at, and we test the blood for those genes, well, do you have those jack two genes in your blood right now that are saying that you have cancer in the blood? No, this guy's a fucking idiot. I'm sorry, but if you don't know that, you have no business talking about this medication, and you have no business prescribing it. And any patient that's going to this guy who is getting testosterone replacement therapy, and this guy's forcing them to go give blood every so often or whatever, and crashing their ferritin, that can be permanent. And you fuck with your ferritin enough takes over a year longer to get that healed up and it may never heal and so say you keep going to these stupid clinics and they're going to keep making you give blood and then you're going to keep fucking up your blood more the, no this guy doesn't know what he's talking about and he may know some of the basics but he doesn't know the clinical aspects and how you do this on a day-to-day -day basis and i really hope that he's not prescribing this medication because he doesn't know how to prescribe it they need to have this aspect managed, get regular blood work, and some people even take baby aspirin to thin the blood a little bit to make sure it doesn't get too thick.
Another risk that can happen um, is for some guys, especially with family histories of male pattern baldness, testosterone can convert to a derivative called DHT. And in DHT, areas of the brain that are very sensitive are right here, um, balding on the scalp in these particular areas right here. Some guys find that they lose their hair when they take testosterone. And that's not something that necessarily comes back unless you do another oh, different kinds God. of therapy with stem cells or different it's things. It's not how this works at all. You it's could lose your hair works. doing TRT. Some guys are very sensitive to it. That's why you see a lot of bald professional bodybuilders who have abused testosterone for years, no more hair up top. So if that's important to you, consider that. Additionally, testosterone can increase the oil production of your, uh, the glittering glands on your skin. So you can find True. that, oh man, man, you have acne for the first time in 20, 30 years if you start testosterone therapy. Another thing worth considering is testosterone doesn't just Do stay the testosterone. Method. Again, it converts to things like DHT. Shave and your head estrogen. and grow goatee. Yes, testosterone can turn to estrogen. So some guys find that when they take testosterone, it can convert just to estrogen through this process called aromatization. <laughs> and there are tissues in the male body that are sensitive to estrogen, even our nipples. True. So some guys find that they have growth of breast tissue under the nipples. So these are real concerns and things that can happen. And doctors do prescribe different adjunct medications often with TRT to block some of these estrogen effects. So you may find things like like um, Clomid oh, or Arimidex, which are things that might block the estrogen receptor or block the conversion of testosterone to estrogen, can be something that's prescribed as well. So though the picture here is that TRT is a big decision. If you're going to go down this route, you're going to be managing a lot of different variables than trying to do it naturally. And it may be indicated for you, it's just going to make things a lot more complicated between these injections. Oh, Lord. Wow. I swear. Okay. What he's talking about is testosterone, which then gets converted through a couple of processes at the bottom of the hormone cascade. It then gets processed into estradiol, E2. We measure that with an E2 sensitive blood test, LCMS. There is no high number of estradiol. Now, we have to split apart adipose tissue, means your fat, a lot of tissue, CYP450 enzymes, which means you clear a drug quickly, and you convert that into estradiol. And we have to separate those two. Now, so say there is the person who has high CYP450 enzymes and they're clearing the medication more. Well, they might need more medication, so instead of doing what you would normally do if you're a dummy uh, general practitioner doctor and you don't know what you're doing, you'd probably just give them 100 milligrams and, oh, I heard about this aromatase inhibitor, and you'd give it to somebody. What does an aromatase inhibitor do? It completely crushes all the estradiol in your body. Well, why are we taking testosterone? We're taking it for cardiovascular health and for brain health. Well, what's inside of your brain, your eyes, your cardiovascular system? Aromatase. Estradiol. Estrogen. What protects you from cardiovascular risk? Like what Dr. Morgenthaler just talked about. Estradiol. Okay? We're not just taking this for testosterone and androgens. We're taking this for estradiol. Where do boners come from? Estradiol. What happens if someone takes an aromatase inhibitor? They don't have boners. Okay, so... And he just mentioned Clomid. You don't fucking give someone Clomid if they're on testosterone. Now, there is a medication called enclomiphene. It is a, let's say it's an offshoot or an analog of clomid citrate. And enclomiphene doesn't have the negative health effects that clomid does. Clomid causes floaters in the eyes and it can cause permanent eye damage or even fucking blindness. This guy's supposedly a naturopathic doctor. He should know this. And you should never do this, ever. And if you were going to take a medication like this, just stick with HCG. It doesn't have the negative health benefits or consequences. And, or HMG or another fertility medication. Don't even touch Clomid ever. It's, it's just legal. Don't do it. I'll come to your house and I'll tell you not to do it if I have to. Um, and then in Clomiphene, I guess. I mean, it's supposedly safe, but I don't trust it either. Uh, I think it's a different drug technically, but I would still just not even touch it. Just do HMG and HCG. 
Um, there's no reason to touch it unless you absolutely have to, and you're in a make or break at time to get pregnant. I, I don't see a point in doing it. There's more health risks than there are benefits. Um, in terms of this whole, oh, it shuts you down or whatever, and testosterone is bad because your nuts will atrophy. Well, you just fucking take HCG or HMG. Okay, all this drama about your nuts atrophying, well, then you take a fertility medication that stops your balls from... Uh, this whole thing is just the fact that doctors know what they're, ta they're talking about, and they're not trained in this, and they just look at something and read something, and they don't have the training and the amount of patience and knowledge to actually do this correctly. When you do it, you do roughly 100 milligrams to 500 milligrams, depending on the person, you then titrate them up to a specific number that feels good for them, roughly around the 30 to 50 free testosterone range. Then you focus on if there's any symptoms, any symptoms or any sort of negative consequences. Then, if there's not, then you add HCG or HMG or another fertility medication to maintain their balls to make sure that they're fertile and they have the ability to have children, and you go along your way. This whole drama, there's no, this is complete nonsense. I, and this guy has over 400 something thousand people who've watched this. I Actions, don't understand. Looking at the kind of schedules of these things and maybe even taking different kinds of medications to make sure that the testosterone ends up on the right track and not causing different kinds of side effects. So those are the main medical risks, I would say, um, as long as the fact also understanding that it does decrease your own natural testosterone production. Um, if you do it long enough, it can be, you can get kickstarted again, but your levels can really, really decrease. So if you come off the testosterone, you are going to have lower levels than when you even started in the first place. So it's more of a long-term thing. Some alternatives. Well, depending on what your blood work looks like, there are certain things you can do in terms of vitamins, herbs, and minerals that may be able to increase your free testosterone levels. So stinging oh, nettle is an herb that has some research showing that I it swear. increases free testosterone levels. So let's say your testosterone levels no. are in the middle to normal take it range, for life. but your free you testosterone is a little low. I would say as a first line thing, before we go down the oh. rabbit hole of TRT, is like, what can we do to naturally increase free testosterone levels? Can we sleep more? Because cortisol and testosterone have a seesaw relationship. When cortisol goes up, testosterone goes down. So can we sleep and reduce stress? Can we use things like stinging nettle? Can we take some of these natural precursors that tend to support testosterone levels, like vitamin Ooh, D, if DHEA, I ever hear that again, magnesium. I swear. A good probiotic is also a really There's good no idea as well. There's no such thing as And some normal. creatine monohydrate. These things are research Low proven normal. to help support Ugh, natural testosterone disgusting. levels. So if you have not exhausted all those options yet, I would look there first, 100%. And we're going to link an article below in the description called The Natural Testosterone Boosters That Actually Work. And this is where we review all the research and show you which ones work, because there's a lot of crap out there with different kinds of herbs that people claim work, but they don't actually mm -hmm. show up in the studies to improve testosterone levels. But they're all alter alternatives. And there even are some prescription medications like clomiphene, that clomid, that can increase your free testosterone levels, although it's not technically, it's not testosterone at all. It's an adjunct medication that decreases. Uh -huh. Estrogen, oh, which may improve your testosterone overall load. A lot of guys are going pretty willy, uh, doctors are going willy nilly these days with prescribing a lot of testosterone. And in the United States, the FDA is cracking down None a lot of this harder. Stuff works, and they're the making way. sure this is really medically necessary because there's a lot of people that were <clears throat> using these therapies over the past <sighs> few God. years. So work with your doctor. Yeah, and it'll make you see blind. if it's right for you. At Fucking the very retard. least, I know you start with some of these alternative therapies to make uh, sure that you've exhausted your options no. for doing this naturally. Um, and if it ends up being indicated after that, then it could be life changing for you. Uh, Description on articles so you can read this stuff, print it out. Out. And if you like this stuff, give us a thumbs up. Drop us a comment below on your experience. Um, give us a comment below. Thanks for being here, my friend. I hope you found this valuable. If so, let us know below. And I'll talk to you very soon. And I'll see you around the channel. Well, I'm glad that I did this video, and um, I hope that no one's actually taking this guy's advice for anything. Um, uh, okay, well, in closing, there's no such thing as low net world. We just learned that from Dr. Morgenthaler. There's either optimized levels or there's not, which means that you are at a roughly 30 to 70 free testosterone, you feel good, you're doing great, you don't have any of the negative health consequences. Um, 
that you are fertile, which means you're taking HCG, or then you're naturally so fertile. Um, we don't take Clomid, because it causes fucking blindness, permanent eye damage, which I have permanent eye damage from this fucking drug, because my original doctor put me on one year of Clomid monotherapy and an aromatase inhibitor like a fucking idiot, because he got trained like a hundred years ago, and he did medical school in like the 70s or something like that, which... Yeah, no. We don't... Okay, we don't do that. And... We don't want to cross our estrogen. The reason why we take testosterone is for the upregulation of estradiol, so that you actually have boners, you have cognition, you have aromatase in your eyes so you can see. Okay, now we know that. Okay. All these other natural testosterone booster nonsense he's talking about. Okay, there's a couple of medic... Uh, you know, supplements you might be able to get, like... I don't know. Say a couple of percentages above you know, a certain amount, but none of those are going to be able to bring you up to optimized levels and what we learned from Dr. Morgenthaler, what is in the literature that says you're not going to have a heart attack or a stroke, optimized levels. So just don't even, don't even deal with it. Just go to a hormone replacement clinic, get replaced, get on the right track, focus on the rest of the things you have to focus on. There's no negative health consequences for long-term use of testosterone. What was in the past using methyl testosterone or in women progestins, which were a synthetic progesterone or um, synthetic estrogens that we used to use, now we use bioidenticals um, for hormone replacement, so whether that's testosterone cypionate, testosterone enanthate, propionate, um, the compounded bioidentical estrogens and progesterones for women um, and we don't mess around with what it's I don't even think legally you could even buy testosterone methyl I'm pretty sure it has to be illegal I wouldn't even look it up because it's it causes cancer so we don't even take that anymore that was proven to be you know not a good therapy um, in any case I super pissed off to be honest I'm glad that I actually watched this um, if I can help someone if I can save a life if I can tell you don't take Clomid ever um, <laughs> if you have to take enclomiphene but just start with HCG so say so say there's this you know one in a million case that you wanted to be you know, get fertile and you're at like so say 650 or something like that and you're you're still symptomatic but you want to try HCG or HMG monotherapy well fuck it try it there's no um, consequences from taking these fertility medications where it's going to be bad for you. So just fuck, take it. If it works, it works. If not, then just try testosterone cypionate, 100 milligrams to 500 milligrams, somewhere in there. Figure out to get you up to a free testosterone level of 30 to 70. Get yourself around there somewhere that you feel good and move along with your day. Uh, this guy obviously doesn't prescribe this. I don't understand why he would even do a video on it. It doesn't make any sense. Um, because he's obviously not trained in it. He didn't even know that uh, erythrocytosis is different than polycythemia vera. Now, obviously, he shouldn't be prescribing this. Uh, I don't understand. I, uh, yeah. In any case, this is TRT for Warriors. I appreciate you guys for being here. I'm super pissed off now. <laughs> so I'm gonna go slam some, uh, some good tea and, uh, chill back and watch a uh, Michael Caine movie and I uh, hope you guys um, are healthy and um, please join the TRT for Warriors Facebook group um, and ask any of your questions there. We have doctors inside of the group. We have verified clinics that I've personally uh, talked to. Uh, my own personal doctors in there and we have a ton of patients that are in there. So if you're a doctor or a researcher and you want to learn about this, you want to learn from patients what they're doing, join our group. And there's some other groups as well that I can associate with you with. So you guys have an awesome almost summer by the time this comes out. And um, be safe. <laughs>